It is week five of the NFL season and the New England Patriots are preparing for their matchup against America's team, aka the Dallas Cowboys. Now we'll be previewing that game and more around the NFL coming up on the Nesson Football Update. My name is Ashley Allen, your host for the Nesson Football Update. It was another crazy week in the NFL, complete with unexpected endings and some less than stellar performances, especially in the kicking front. Pittsburgh Steelers kicker Josh Scobie was cut after another dismal performance on Thursday against the Ravens. And Jacksonville's kicker Jason Myers missed two field goals that could have iced the game for the Jags. Instead, they lost to the Colts 16-13 in overtime. Jameis Winston threw four picks, Andrew Luck didn't play, and Colin Kaepernick continued his downward spiral in a loss against the Packers. The worst of the week, though, doesn't belong to a player. Joe Philbin was fired as the coach of the Miami Dolphins after his team's 1-3 start to the season. But it's a new week, and Michaela Vernava is with Nesson.com's Doug Kide to discuss how the Patriots are coming out of their bye. Well, the Patriots are back to work after a week of rest coming off the bye, and now they're preparing to take on the Dallas Cowboys, who are just absolutely decimated by injuries at this point. So what was looking like it would be one of the toughest matchups for the Patriots this season now is looking like a surefire win. And looking ahead at the rest of the schedule, it really doesn't look like any of their other opponents can really give them that much of a challenge. So, Doug, how do the Patriots avoid complacency at this point? Uh, Bill Belichick is pretty good at limiting complacency on this team. Uh, even for a team like the Jaguars, he really hypes this team up, tells them what their strengths are, tells them, you know, that this is going to be a challenge, that no NFL week is a walk in the park. So, I mean, obviously, yeah, you take Tony Romo out of the equation, you even take a guy like Lance Dunbar out of the equation, and this looks like a much easier matchup, but no one is better at pumping his team up for a team than Bill Belichick. He's going to be talking about Brandon Whedon like he's Troy Aikman. He's going to be talking about Joseph Randall like he's Emmett Smith. And this team will definitely be able to get up for every opponent they have moving forward. And another thing Bill Belichick is always doing is shaking up the roster. And now Trader Bill is on the prowl. The Patriots have made seven trades since training camp opened in July. That's a league high, the latest being trading tight end Michael Humanau Anui to the New Orleans Saints for defensive lineman Akeem Hicks. Uh, yeah, I think that this is just a good value for the Patriots. Uh, Hooman had moved down to fourth on the depth chart at tight end, so this is just a good deal all around. Knicks had kind of fallen out of favor uh, with the Saints. Tons of upside with this guy. He was really one of the best defensive linemen in football in 2013, but the Patriots will definitely have to move, make some more moves moving forward because some guys are coming off pup, coming off injured reserve. So we'll see if, if Hicks sticks. I think he will. I think this will be a good move for the Patriots, but we'll just have to kind of wait and see. All right, thanks, Doug. Stick around because later in the update, we'll be breaking down the Patriots Cowboys matchups. Hi, this is Ben Watanabe with Nesson.com, and here are some interesting matchups we're taking a look at this week. First up, the New England Patriots giving up nine points on the road against the Dallas Cowboys. This line opened up at seven and a half, and honestly, it's going to have to get pretty wide before we can justify picking against the Patriots. New England is 2 0 1 against the spread this season, and the Cowboys are just 1 6 against the spread in their last seven at home. Next, we'll be looking at the Washington Redskins, nine point underdogs against the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons are 4 0, but they've been doing it with a patchwork offensive line, and Washington is second in the NFL defending the rush. Also, we're not completely sold on the Falcons, whose success has come against not exactly the strongest competition. Finally, we're intrigued by the Denver Broncos giving up 5.5 on the road against the Oakland Raiders. The Broncos have struggled this season against the Vikings, Ravens, and Chiefs, and then Oakland is very good at covering the field, as evidenced by their seven turnovers forced the 10th most in the NFL. Now for your fantasy football mailbag questions, send it over to Darren Hartwell. Thanks, Ben. Throughout the week, you guys have been sending us all your fantasy football questions on Facebook and Twitter. And now we're finally here to answer them in this week's mailbag. First up is Christine, who wants to know whether to start Jay Cutler or Matthew Stafford at quarterback this week. Both of those guys aren't ideal options, but I'd give the nod to Cutler over Stafford in this one. Cutler looked pretty decent in the, against the Oakland Raiders coming back from a hamstring injury in week four, and now he gets the Kansas City Chiefs, who have allowed the most fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks so far this season. Stafford, on the other hand, has a much tougher lineup against the Arizona Cardinals secondary, and he hasn't thrown for 300 yards in seven straight games. Our next question comes from Jude, who wants to know if he should drop DeMarco Murray already. That's a tough question, as Murray has been one of the most frustrating running backs in fantasy this season, but I wouldn't drop him just yet. 
The Eagles still have time to figure things out, and they did pay Murray a lot of money this offseason. While you shouldn't be starting Murray on a weekly basis right now, I think it's worth having him on your lineup in case he turns things around. Our last question comes from Jay, who has a little bit of a dilemma. He needs three players to start out of these six. Todd Gurley, Duke Johnson, Mark Ingram, CJ Anderson, LeGarrette Blunt, and Alfred Morris. Ingram and Gurley are no-brainers, and Gurley looked awesome last week, but Morris makes the cut as the third guy for two reasons. One, he has an awesome matchup against the Atlanta Falcons, who have allowed the most touchdowns to opposing running backs this season. And two, he got 10 more touches last week than backup Matt Jones, which is a good sign going forward. If you want to be a part of next week's mailbag, send us your fantasy questions on Twitter and Facebook. And now, here are some highlights from Nesson's fantasy football podcasts, as well as other featured podcasts on Nesson.com. If you're if you're trying to pick up a defense and uh, and kind of roll the dice uh, on the waiver wire, uh, who do you who do you have this week? I think this one we're both gonna like, and that's the Giants against the Niners. I think whenever Colin Kaepernick is throwing the ball, I want that opposing defense. Yep. But like you were saying, I mean, this schedule does not look very daunting at this point. Broncos, Giants, those are really the the two matchups that you kind of look down the road as as games that they could lose. You could throw the Colts in there too, but the Colts have looked so bad at this point. I just don't see a possible way that the Colts beat the Patriots since that's such a uh, deflate gate re revenge game right now. I actually got up early on Sunday to go work out before the game so I could sit there and be like, I want to be under the couch at 9.30 to watch the Jets and the Dolphins. Really? And at like 9.40, I was like, what the hell did I do that for? Michaela Vernava alongside Doug Kide at Gillette Stadium, where the Patriots are preparing to take on an injury-plagued Dallas Cowboys team. Doug, I really hope that that injury bug is not contagious. <laughs> but the Patriots will be taking on, according to Jerry Jones, one of the most gifted passers. So how do you think the Patriots will look against quarterback Brandon Whedon? Uh, I think they'll look just fine. I'm not sure if Jerry Jones misspoke. He might be one of the most gifted pitchers in the NFL. He used to be a minor league pitcher through 97 miles per hour. But that's about all that Whedon has going for him. Um, Patriots are going to be just fine. I think they're probably going to game plan a little bit more for the running game in this game. Uh, Joseph Randall, Darren McFadden, Kristen Michael. Cowboys have three pretty big running backs in there. None of them are great, but the Cowboys offensive line does make them dangerous. So I think the Patriots might kind of jam the line a little bit, uh, use some more of their big bodies like Akeem Hicks who they just acquired. Really, I think most of it will be planning for that run game with Romo and Des Bryant out of this game. The other side of the ball for Dallas took a big hit in Sunday night's game against the New Orleans Saints when Sean Lee took a big hit to the head, but they will have Greg Hardy and Rolando McClain coming back. So how will that help them defend against Tom Brady and the Patriots offense? Uh, it's kind of a robbing Peter to pay Paul situation here, obviously. Possibly being without Lee is a big hit for them, but Hardy definitely adds a big element to that Dallas Cowboys defense, which already is pretty strong, but Hardy is one of the most versatile uh, defensive ends in the NFL. But, you know, this Patriots offense has been so good that even if every piece was in place, I think they still could probably move the ball pretty well against this Cowboys defense. Hardy definitely helps, but I don't think it will be quite enough in this matchup. Well, both Hardy and McLean might be a little rusty, too, after sitting out for so long. Thanks, Doug. Hey there, it's Mike Cole. There's a lot of change in the Week 5 NFL Power Rankings. Uh, let's start with one team on the rise. I absolutely love what the Atlanta Falcons have done uh, in their first season under Dan Quinn. Quinn's come in and kind of changed the culture and definitely changed the way the, the Falcons play football. Uh, this is a team that's got back to the run. Devontae Freeman had arguably the best game of his career last week, and the defense looks better. Plus, you got to love the combination of Matt Ryan and Julio Jones. One team heading in the wrong direction, that would be the Miami Dolphins. They were dump trucked on Sunday by the New York Jets in London. Uh, it ended up costing Joe Feldman his job. It's a team that came into this season with high expectations and they failed miserably to live up to those. Ryan Tannehill is a baby who is apparently calling out uh, practice squad players. Uh, it's just a total just disaster in Miami uh, and that's why they're toward the bottom now. Uh, and at number one, there's not a whole lot of change at the top. Uh, the New England Patriots, despite being on a bye last week, didn't play, but that's not going to cost them their spot at number one. Uh, it, they have the Cowboys this week, so I'm not expecting a whole lot of change heading into next week. It's a game the Patriots should handle. Uh, and until they slip up, it's probably going to be their spot to lose. For the rest of my Week 5 NFL Power Rankings, visit Nesson.com slash NFL. Now let's go to Ben Watanabe, who's got his locks and upsets of the week. Thanks, Mike. I'm Ben Watanabe, and I'm here to give you an upset and a lock to watch in Week 5. For our upset, I'm going to take the Rams, getting 10.5 points on the road in Lambeau Field against the Green Bay Packers. The Packers are 8-2 in their last 10 at Lambeau. 
But that was before Todd Gurley began to really look like what the Rams envisioned him being when they took him out of Georgia, and Aaron Donald is the best defensive player that Aaron Rodgers and company have faced this season. As for my lock, I'm taking the Pittsburgh Steelers and three points on the road in San Diego. I noticed a couple weeks ago that the Chargers virtually never cover at home. They've covered only once in the last seven games, and they haven't exactly been playing juggernauts. Keep in mind also that the Steelers are just one missed Josh Scobie kick away from being undefeated against the spread this season. Now we send you over to Darren Hartwell for his DraftKings lineup. Thanks, Ben. On DraftKings, you can set a new lineup every week. So here is mine for week five. One of my value picks is Jaguars wide receiver Alan Hearns, who's available for $4,500. Hearns has caught touchdown passes in back-to-back -back weeks now, and he had 11 catches for 116 yards last week. He has a great matchup against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this week, so I would expect more of the same from Hearns. My other value pick is Patriots running back Deion Lewis, who I have in the flex for $4,800. The Patriots get the Cowboys in week five, and as we saw with the Saints on Sunday night, they traditionally don't perform well against pass-catching running backs. Lewis has been heavily involved in the Patriots offense so far, and I wouldn't expect that to change this week. Okay, well that is it for this week's Nets in Football Update. Make sure to tune in every week for all your Patriots NFL and fantasy updates. And get ready because you know what next week is Revenge Week. The New England Patriots will face off against the Indianapolis Colts for the first time since the AFC Championship game. You know you're not going to want to miss that one. I'm Ashley Allen, and for everyone at Nesson, thanks for watching.